Hello, everybody, and welcome to the inaugural episode of whatever the hell I'm going to call this. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, basically, this is inspired by if you follow, if you've watched uh, K Wing and his channel, he has done in the past a podcast type thing that he does with his wife called. Um, Oh, uh, Sunday Drive, and yeah. it's also inspired by Mark Bussler, uh, who does Classic Game Room, um, and he has a series that he recently started doing where he just kind of relaxes a little bit, plays uh, Gran Turismo tracks that he likes with cars that he likes, and... And he, um, I don't know if he's got a name for that series yet. It's still pretty darn new, but two of my favorite YouTube channels. Hey, um, uh, big shout out to both of them. Um, and joining me is my good friend Dalton. Say hello to everybody. Hello. And this is going to be kind of a free-form podcast type of thing where we just sit and talk about whatever, and it'll come out whenever the hell we feel like doing it. And I decided to start with Gran Turismo 2, and I recently got this game again, and I haven't played it in years, so when I suck at it, that's why. Yeah, I'd be the same, yeah, I'd, I'd be the same so don't worry. I'm terrible at racing games. For the most part. Okay, let's go to uh, special events. And let's go to uh, Sunday Cup. Yeah, I'm not very good at this game either. Yeah. I just build a car, soup it up to hell and back, and then go. Hell yeah. Uh, I did not pick a particularly great starter car, so it would seem, because um, this thing steers like a frickin' tank very, very poorly. So it's like a an early, like, PlayStation horror game. Yeah. So it's aggressive um, evil. <laughs> like, I can't make decent turn, turns at, like, 40 miles an hour in this thing. And no amount of souping it up has seemed to do anything about that. Like, are, aren't uh, car mechanics in this series like really like more realistic than other games? Yes, they tried to the, go for yeah. more realistic car mechanics in this. Actually, this was the first series to kind of take that idea and just run with it. Yeah, because there, there, there wasn't really that many, like, realistic driving simulators. On, yeah, they like, were console. all arcade prior to this, and oh, yeah. Gran Turismo 1 came out, and it was a huge, huge deal. It sold, like, 10 oh, million sold copies. Shit, yeah. It ton. sold, like, insane. And at the time, I think the first one, all you could get was Japanese dealers. Because a whole bunch of uh, even some Japanese dealers wouldn't sign off, sign off on this because it was an unproven concept. But it turned out to be a huge. I mean, like look at that. You got Firestone, Pennzoil, and all kinds of companies are like, yeah, let's put our stuff in the game. There's a Ford advertisement, but yeah, the product placement they? in this game makes a lot more sense. Yeah, because it is the kind of thing that you would see. At professional racing. Yeah, it's not the like make the make believe companies you see in like pole position, like shit like that. Well, I, I I think there were actually like real like advertisements in pole position. I'm not entirely sure though. That might have been something else. I'm not entirely but. sure either. But yeah, I mean, also the, the graphics in general in this game really sold it too. Yeah, it, this, when it came out, this was gorgeous. Obviously, it looks kind of ugly as sin nowadays, but <laughs> yeah. it, this was incredibly gorgeous when it came out. And it was, a like I said, huge deal, and they even got some major bands for uh, 
this uh, second game in the series. For the first one, I think, had mostly original music, if I recall correctly. This one had actually uh, a Stone Temple Pilots song, which is kind of cool. Yeah, I didn't know about the soundtrack of the series that well. Yeah, and it had, um, I think it had me Methods of Mayhem as well. So it, it basically got like the big bands of the day and put them in. Yeah. I mean, this was 99, so STP was still a... I mean, they're a good band still, but they were a huge deal in 99. Oh, oh God, yeah. It, it kind of reminds me of um, Crazy Taxi in a way, because like, like, the, off, the Offspring were in that game. And a, a bunch Back of, like, when the Offspring were... Were, yeah, were, like, you know, like... They, they were it. <laughs> They were the yeah. They were the shit. In the late they 90s. were the nineties. They, they were really like they were a really big ass punk band in the late nineties. God damn it! I'm gonna get second, aren't I? Nope. I'm gonna get first. All right. Get myself some money. Not doing. I, yeah, not doing too bad actually. Yeah, that's what you wind up doing in this uh, game is you uh, buy. You start off with ten thousand dollars. Which you basically have to go to um, the. Uh, hang on, I'll take you back out and I'll show you everything. Bonus, 3,000. Awesome. Let's save real quick. Slot one, yes. Um. But I'll show you, like, the main menu and stuff. Because I know you're not that familiar with this series. Yeah. Unfortunately. Like, I, I just remember, like, Grand Turismo... Like, I, I just remember, like, Grand Turismo 3 being a, being a really big deal when that came out. And, like, how the graphics were on that game alone. And just, it was gorgeous back in the day. And yeah, Grand Turismo I, 4 oh, yeah. was, uh... It could display in 1080i on the PlayStation 2, which is just goddamn mind-blowing. It wasn't the only game that could. It, it was just really unheard of for the PS2. Like, for the PS2 in particular, it's really kind of unheard of, considering yeah. hardware specs and whatnot at the time. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, let's see when the stream catches up. I'll show you the different... Uh, Okay. Obviously, go race. That's where you go to um, race your car. You go uh, the car wash up here. Up in the left corner is uh, pretty self-explanatory. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> if you go down to machine test. You can run your car through a few tests. Start at zero, go 400 meters. Start at zero, go 1,000 meters. And you can test it for uh, max speed. Pretty self-explanatory. Pretty self-explanatory for the most yeah. part. And then you'll notice uh, license tests. After you start the game, you have ten thousand dollars, and you um, your first priority is to buy yourself a car, which basically means you're probably going to get something from Japan. Oh yeah. Because they have all the used cars. Japan is up here in East City. <laughs> I'll explain the license licenses here in a little bit. I've gotten two of them so far. Okay, Japan is up here in East City. And then you just select your dealer. If the stream would ever fucking catch up. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Uh, there's nothing I can do about that. But you select your dealer. So you got, like, Toyota, Daihatsu, Mitsubishi... Nissan, Mazda, Subaru, Honda, Suzuki, all these different dealers, and you'll get different dealers for different parts of the world. And I bought my starter car as a Honda protege, and you go to Honda, and they will have 
whenever the hell it catches up, they'll have uh, different options for you. God damn it. <laughs> it's hard to explain the game if it's taken for if I'm waiting for the stream. Okay, you got new where you buy new cars. You got used where you buy used cars. This dealer has special events. Not every dealer will, but this dealer has special events for for uh, their cars in specific, which will be like different races you can do. And then you have a special where they'll have uh, really expensive special cars that you can buy. That's usually where you'll get like pre-souped up racing cars and stuff like that that they sell. Oh, yeah. But what was really cool, what was really unique about this game was uh, Tune here. When you would go to Tune, you would have options for upgrading all kinds of different things. Also, it's, it's like a really in-depth, like... Really in like um, upgrade system for the game. Oh yeah, dude, and th there's a lot of depth here, and you can add a lot of horsepower to your car, as well as a bunch of other things to improve how it handles. I'm working on the brakes right now, and I already got, um, sports brakes. And I need to get a brake balance controller. Which will cost ten thousand five hundred dollars, and you get that by racing. But once you bought your car, which you'll want to do in the east block, in the east city, you'll want to go over to license. Because for the most part, you need a license to enter in any race in the game. Oh, okay. I wanted this to be. I wanted this to be free for him, and here I am explaining how to actually play the game like this is a let's play. <laughs> no, it's <okay. laughs> no, it's okay. It's just this first episode, so. Yeah, and I already have. Um, well, it'll load up license in here in a little bit. But licensing will getting your license will put you through a number of tests like. Soft corners, hard corners, braking, and stuff like that, and S turn corners and whatnot. And you take the test and try to do it in a certain set of time, around a certain set of parameters, to try to pass. And I've already gotten B and A. I haven't gotten any of the international license, but I don't really need them right now. Yeah. And once you have your license, you pick a starter, race, and go race. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. You good. gather money from racing to buy more cars and upgrade your current car. Oh, so you can actually like purchase more than one car at a time. Can, like, oh, dude, choose. you can have a massive garage of cars in this game. You're going to need to because there's different car there's if you're gonna do everything in this game there's different cars that have different um, you can use in different uh, um, like different types of tracks you mean yeah like different type different types of cars for different races that'll be divided up it like you see this uh, you see a front wheel drive race here and a rear wheel drive and mid engine cars and four wheel drive all on this one page yeah all that stuff is um you have to have a specific type of car in order to do it and there's other classes as well there's like sports car classes and lightweight car classes and all kinds of stuff wow i mean wow i mean like for the time, that's pretty damn good in terms of like content. Yeah, this game had an ungodly amount of content. There are over 600 cars in this <laughs> oh game and 27 tracks. God damn. Yeah, this <laughs> game is insanely packed with content. Was this um, uh, 
Was this um, uh, one disc or two discs? Two discs. The oh, first okay. disc was arcade, but the second disc is what we're looking at here, which is uh, the main uh, draw of the game, which is simulation mode. This is there's no set story in Gran Turismo. You just get cars, make money, upgrade your cars, and get other cars to enter other races, and gradually work your way through the game as you see fit. It's kind of open-ended in that regard. That's pretty cool. Yeah, like the NASCAR yeah. even, even like the NASCAR games, like on PS2, had like a really stupid story in them. Like just kind of funny. But I, I like how this is more like just like you just pop the game in and get cars and just race without any like like forced in story or whatever. Yeah, the, for um, for uh, this was a huge deal, especially for uh, car enthusiasts. Oh God, yeah. Like, it, it, it kind of seems like this is what the game was marketed towards. Yeah, was this was their enthusiast. dream game, and I'm not really a car enthusiast, but I, I'll, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that this game isn't fun as hell either. And there's no damage in this game. I don't, I don't know if there's any damage in any of the uh, Gran Turismo games, but you can kind of drive like a jerk because there's no damage. But if you want to, <laughs> like, just have your car rebound, and you can see me doing it there, you have your car rebound off of your opponent's car to keep yourself A, past them, B, knock them off the road, C, keep yourself in first place and whatnot. You can totally do that. So, yeah, there's like, there's like no repercussions to like doing that at all, really. I do it all the time. <laughs> yeah. It seems like it's like the most like desirable method to win in this game, especially like later on in the harder types of levels, it seems like. Yeah. That will be like uh, the best thing to do. By the time that this game came out, the first game had sold so damn well that they had made a believer out of um, the big car company, so they got a lot more cars from a lot more companies. Like Volkswagen and... Like yeah, Volkswagen is in the, uh, I think it's in the east. Is it the... Uh, northern block? The northern city? I don't remember which one has... Uh... Yeah, that is, it kind of sounds like the northern block would have like the European stuff. Yeah, it's in the it's, it's it's in the European block, which there are some really expensive cars in there because that's where like Ashton Martin is. Oh yeah. <laughs> and Ashton, and if you're talking Ashton Martin, you're getting into like James Bond cars and shit. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Nothing wrong with that, I'd say. Yeah, well, it's, uh, they they have some gorgeous cars, man, and it's a lot, obviously these are all older models because this came out in '99. So probably the newest model you'll have is a '99. But uh, that's still not too bad, I'd say. I mean, I mean, it's like cool seeing the newer cars and the newer ones, but like it's it's cool seeing like this is kind of like a time capsule in a way for like cars. I got to see the newest cars at the time, and yeah, it really is. Um, Hey, there was a red Barchetta in that. Or, or, there was a Barchetta in that race. I hope it was red. <laughs> Rush would be proud if it was red. <laughs> I feel like they were in the soundtrack. I feel like they were in the soundtrack. Yeah. Well, red <laughs> Barchetta should be in this. Red Barchetta is a great song. I love that track. My uncle has a country place that no one knows about. No one wants to hear me sing. <laughs> I need to listen to more Rush, to be honest. Oh, they're such a good band. They're one of the best prog bands of all time. I was like, weren't they really the first prog band that like play prog with like hard rock in a way? I don't know. Uh, they were one of the earlier ones doing it in the early 70s. Yeah, because like it, I think like Prague was like really kind of separated from like hard rock and that type of thing at the time. I always thought. Uh, our hard rock was really kind of developing at the exact same time that Prague was. 
It came in a little bit earlier because of 60s stuff oh, like cream. Like early, like oh yeah, like the, the early like heavy stuff. Yeah, like yeah the heavy cup. blues rock like yeah, cream but, and yeah. uh, and uh, what the fuck is the name? Their name. Yeah, I, I, I can't remember either. I should know. Um, the uh, Kings. Yeah, the Kings were one of them. They they were pretty heavy for their time. Oh, what the fuck is a? It's gonna drive me nuts. So I think of it. They did a cover of "Summertime Blues" that was some people consider to be the first uh, heavy metal song. And I'm gonna do this race here, and I'm gonna get my ass kicked. <laughs> Just gotta bump those cars and get in the first. Every yep, single time I do this race, I get my ass kicked. I don't know how I managed to get second place once. <laughs> It's gonna bump them cars. You gotta play dirty. Yeah. Oh, what the hell is their name? We we even sold their album a few to, uh, like a week or two ago. This has been a bad month for album sales, man. It's been slow. Yeah. It it, it always kind of seems like you, like every time something does sell from your um, from your site on eBay, like it's always at like the same time, like some. Like, people like buy like three or four albums at like one time and you're kind of stagnant for like the rest of the time. Or like some guy might buy like five or six at the same time like that one time. Yeah, we, <laughs> the mo we've sold like nine or ten albums in one go in the past. Was it, was it all just like cheaper stuff or is it like even like more expensive type of stuff? Uh... Nine or ten albums will be a hundred, hundred and fifty dollars worth of music. That doesn't sound too bad, but I guess you gotta take into consideration the amount you spend on like lots and stuff. Yeah. You have, to be, you have to kind of be careful with lots. Of, get your white car ass back here. <laughs> It'd be nice if I quit hitting the fence. We're in, I guess we're in first now, at least. Well, not anymore. Yeah, that that's the white car I was yelling at. Yeah, it finally caught up. The stream caught up. But, um... I said, get your white car ass back here. I passed you. <laughs> oh, man. I'm in third right now. And I'm gonna finish the first lap in there, damn it! Oh man, so... Metallica finally... Finally oh, yeah. fucking... About goddamn time they're like, yeah, our new album's finally coming out. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, well, I, was released gonna, it. I was gonna mention that. Like, this Metallica thing in general. Yeah, they released a single for it, and it's pretty good! Yeah, I, I, course, yeah I'm, I'm really surprised, honestly. Well, I kind of expected it to be good because, shitty production aside, Death Magnetic was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, like the song, yeah, the songwriting itself was really good. I mean, like a lot of people shit on it all the time because they say it kind of sounds like kind of like generic and bland. But I mean, if you compare it to like Saint Anger, it's like miles ahead of Saint Anger. Yeah. Even though I do think Saint Anger gets too much shit sometimes, uh, because there are some good songs on Saint Anger. But I, I mean, think... yeah, go ahead. But St. Anger's, I think, biggest problem is it just kind of meanders and doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, 90 yeah. 90% of the time. It, it, yeah, it, it, it just kind of seems like half the album's just filler and half the album's like songs they actually kind of cared about in a way. And like, some of the songs just don't, like, like some of the songs just don't go anywhere at all. I mean, like, yeah, some said, of them I mean, sound flat out incomplete. <laughs> and it, like some of them are actually pretty damn good at the same time. Like it sounds like if they had a better like production on it or the, just like better like guitar tunes or whatever, it would have been like a really good song. Like some of the riffs are like actually like pretty good for Metallica standards, like old school standards. I mean, no, like, dirty. No, no, dirty. no, no, no. Oh no, shit! No. Well, I got second. <laughs> Not too bad. <laughs> I thought the white car was gonna pass me, and he didn't. But yeah. Uh, 
this new song has much better production on it. It sounds like an extension of what they were doing on Saint Anger, which is to say, what they were doing on their first four albums. Oh yeah. Because it's really very much kind of has an old school thrash metal feel to it, and I like that. Yeah, like the tempo alone is pretty like decently paced for like that old school thrash sound they used to do. So yeah, that, which... that's nice to hear. Is a lot of how the hell long have we been recording? Uh, I'm not entirely sure actually, <laughs> to, to, to be honest. Because I wanted to talk about my channel a little bit as well. Uh, I haven't uploaded anything in a long time. I haven't uploaded anything since uh, I uploaded myself playing the first two levels of Quake uh, Episode Five, which Machine Games, in case you didn't see that, released a uh, fifth episode for the original Quake to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the game. And it was pretty cool. Oh, and yeah. it, it the, the level design felt old school reminiscent of the original game and I quite liked that. It was a lot of fun to play and I have beaten it since then and I uploaded that video and it got 400 some odd views and id software retweeted it which really made me happy and i enjoyed it a lot that's pretty damn cool if you ask me but i haven't done anything Thanks since that. then and there it's been a number of things as to why um laziness partially other things getting in the way partially let's go get better breaks <laughs> um yeah. Anxiety, partially. So it's just a mix of number of things. I, I will eventually get back to. Um, to playing through. Uh, to let's playing games. I will get back to that, and I will do. Um, you and I actually will do the first Metal Slug, which I'm really looking forward to. I Should be my next game. Hell yeah, I'm looking forward to that too. Because I remember we, we actually played that. Because I remember we, we actually played that when when you came over to my house like two years ago. We actually played the PS3 version of that. Yeah. Yeah, I I can't do that anymore because I live in a different state. But it no. it is what it is. Yeah. Break balance controller. Let's buy this shit. All right. Equip it to my car now, and that will improve my braking. Let's see, what else do I need to do? I need, need to, do I need to do any, let's see, I've done mufflers, brakes. I think I've done everything in engine. Yeah, I've done everything in engine. Oh, yeah. Are you still there? Oh, yeah. Drive train. I'm just making sure I've done everything I can. Transmission. Don't want to full miss racing. What? You don't want to miss anything important. No. <laughs> I want to improve this as much as I possibly can. Let's see. Uh, how much for... Racing slip tires. Seventeen grand, that's a lot. Oh, damn. So, how much for upgrade suspension? Suspension kits. Semi racing, 7,500. Let's go for that next. I'm going to improve the handling of this car as much as I possibly can. Uh, before I work on buying another one. Yeah. Yeah, you can also so like, visit your home and you can go to your garage and you can see all the different cars that you've bought. That's pretty cool. You can see all the upgrades you did to it. Yep, too. You can see uh, 
all the torque and the upgrades and everything that I've done to it. I guess it's going to the specs. And I guess it can always like sell certain cars when you get better ones later on. Yeah, if you want to sell cars, you can do that. You can also keep track of your game status and all the ones you race and all the ones you won and number of cars owned and total value and all that kinds of crap. Oh yeah. Like I remember hearing that in the first Gran Turismo, there's a there's a glitch in the game where you, it's impossible to get 100% completion in it. I don't know if that's true or not. Cause I remember seeing something on G4 like 10 or 13 years ago or something like that. But there's like a, there's a glitch in the first game where it's impossible to get 100%. Because there's something like something that wasn't put in the game or something I can't really remember. I'm, I'm not entirely sure if that's true, but. Here, let's lose a race. <laughs> so, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna lose this race. Let's see how good your upgrades are. Yeah, uh... So, I will get back to that. After I finish... Um... After I finish my next video review for an album, which will be a contrast comparison for, um the remastered version of Prowler in the Yard by Pig Destroyer versus the original version. Oh, I can't wait for that shit, dude. I <laughs> am looking forward to it, and but my problem with it is is the writing process, because I've never done like a comp compare and contrast between two different versions of an album before, so I'm not entirely sure how to write it. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I can tell you all kinds of um, differences between them, but... Yeah, I'm sure you can tell, tell oh, me yeah, a lot oh, better yeah. than I can tell myself. But... Obviously, there's some stuff that I have to mention, like... Like, uh... There's an added song, and there's... Oh, one, yeah. And Jennifer Hart... And the last track is divided up into Piss Angel, I think, is the last track in Jennifer Part 2. Yeah, that they... Because they, they, um, in the original version... Um, Jennifer Part 2 was, like, at the end of His Angel, like, it was in the, in the same song. Yeah. Like, he, like, separated them. And they also, they also left out a track in the remastered version, because they couldn't find the original masters for it, so they didn't bother even putting it on the new version of the album. So there's, there's actually one track missing from the remasters. Yeah, then they did that because they didn't want to bullshit anybody with a... Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I understand that. It is what it is. I mean, because at least they actually like put in like a new unreleased like instrumental like track for it. So, I mean, it kind of made up for it. Yeah, but I can understand if purists... Why that might bother them. It doesn't bother me. I think the new version sounds better through and through. Yeah, I like it too. I mean... Like, the, the, the only thing that I never really cared for as much as, like, the original was, like, the drums. Because I always, I always liked the drums in the original because it had that kind of sloppy sound to it. And it sounded more grindy. I yeah, I, I think the new version overall, though, like, sounds... The, the original version, I think, sounds flat by comparison. Yeah, like, because, like, the, the, the newer remasters have, like, really more, like, polished and more, like a more profound sounding like drum sound like it's more like audible I guess you can say it's more like pronounced than it is on the original version yeah very much so and th that will be fun to do and don't pass me 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 let me get first let me get first <laughs> oh god <laughs> I'm trying to Yes! I got first. Holy okay, shit. I didn't think I actually was going to get first on that. But, um, yeah, it, that should be a lot of fun to do, and I enjoy doing that quite a bit. Um, God, how long have I been recording? I need to double check. I think I might be around 30 minutes, actually. To be 34. honest. 34. Shit, okay. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was kind of right. Shit. It, it felt like 30 some minutes. 
Yeah, shit. I needed to call it then. Um, and I, w I was going to talk about one other thing. I was going to bring up uh, real quickly. Um, Dark Throne has a new track as well. Oh, fuck yeah. That's great, too. And uh, <laughs> Dark... Everything Dark Throne does is usually at least listenable. Oh, like, yeah. they don't do anything that's yeah. outright bad. Yeah, that's true. I mean... And the new track... It's kind of hard to pin down to a genre, isn't it? Yeah, because like it has like it opens up with like death metal sounding riffs in a way, and then it has like a, it has like the vocals are like a far cry from how they were on the last four albums they did, and it's well, like yeah, they're much much better than the previous album, and um, oh. Finres does not sing at all on it, which the is, entire which, album, which is a good thing in my opinion. Yeah, uh, <laughs> they're I. As long as they don't try to do the fake falsetto type things that just sounded awful on the, the previous hello, album. You mean the hello type of vocals? Fucking Jerry Seinfeld shit. Fucking Jerry like, Seinfeld like, shit. Like, like uh, on the track Valkyria. He, the, the vocals on Valkyria are a fucking joke. And when he does leave no cross on it it sounds yeah, God. so goddamn bad. It's kind of cringy at times, too. It's like, it's like so, like... <sighs> It, it just it just sounds so just flat out bad. I mean, it's not even like, I mean, like the music itself's like good. I mean, the music itself's really good, but I mean, like the vocals kind of ruin it sometimes on that album. Yeah, they really do. Um, but the but the music on Underground Resistance is great. Oh yeah, I love the music. Oh hell yeah, that's that's one of the like there there's a lot of great like riffs and memorable riffs in that album, which is really good to hear. Yeah. Uh, this one, just like the last one, is actually, uh, mastered in Texas, which I thought is pretty cool being that I am a Texan. But, what <laughs> it is what it is. It doesn't really matter much where it is mastered. Just, I'm just like, oh, Texas, oh, yeah. kick ass. I guess if I heard, oh, yeah, because I guess, I guess if I heard, if it, if it was mastered in Pennsylvania, I'd be the same way, probably. Yeah. Um, anyway, um, I'm gonna let this go. Thank you everybody for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe down below. We will talk to you guys next time. Thanks everybody and goodbye. Bye.